and we continue learning about quadratics. Yesterday was vertex form. We like vertex form because vertex form is easy to graph. Recap, vertex form is called vertex form because it gives us the vertex, that's right, h comma k. It's what makes the inside equal zero comma the number to the far right. We recognize vertex form because it'll be the only format that has a single set of parentheses squared. Other things vertex form tells us is whether or not the parabola points up or down because positive people smile and negative people frown. Positive on the front, up. Negative on the front, down. And also that front number, if it is between zero and one, like one half or a one third or a three fourths, that's gonna make the graph look wider than it normally would. And if that number on the front is bigger than a one, two, three, 4.5, that's gonna make the graph look skinnier than it would normally. Well, vertex form is great for graphing. Standard form, which is y equals, or f, f, f of x equals, ax squared plus bx plus c, is really, really good for everybody's favorite word problems. Question for me already? Wow. Yeah, isn't the negative like in chapter one, does it mean reflect? Yeah, and that's, yeah, the negative sign on the front does mean reflect, and that is why if it's negative on the front, it points down because a parabola is supposed to point up. So yeah, standard form, fantastic for word problems. And yes, they are coming. They won't be on the mid-chapter two test, but there will be a number of word problems on the chapter two test at the end of the quarter. Now, just like vertex form, standard form does tell us some things. It does tell us some things. Notice here I have two different pictures of quadratics. I have one that points up and I have one that points down. For vertex form, that number on the front determined whether or not it pointed up or down, right? Positive people smile, negative people frown. Well, guess what? Transformations never, ever change. So if the positive number is front, ha, strike that, reverse it. If the front number is positive, the net graph is gonna point up. So if A is greater than zero, you have a smiley face. Yay, happy graph. But if the front number is negative, oh, sad graph, graph points down which is what you would fill in in that first bulleted point down there. The parabola opens up when and down when, those exact same statements. Opens up when A is greater than zero, opens down when A is less than zero. Good news, transformations are never different. So if you understand transformations, you're gonna be pretty happy this year. Because every time we graph something new, you're gonna understand things that are basic about it just because of transformations. Hmm, all right. What else do we have going on with standard form? When we were talking about vertex form, the number on the front, not caring about the positive or negative, the number on the front would tell us if a graph looks skinnier or wider than normal. Transformations never change. So the exact same rules apply to standard form. If the front number is bigger than a one, and here it says absolute value, and that's because I'm telling you, don't worry about whether or not it's positive or negative. If the front number is bigger than a one, then your graph is going to look skinnier. And if the number is between zero and one, which is what absolute value of A less than one means, if the front number is between zero and one, then it's going to make it look wider. So that is not any different. Yay, transformations, they never ever change. No, not because if it's equal to one, then it's the width we expect it to be. Mason, you have a question? I can't tell you. Your hand keeps, every time I look away from you, it look like your hand goes up. That's why I keep looking. Oh, okay. Yay. Happy birthday. So anyway, what else do we know? Okay. So those two things are true just because of transformations. What else are we talking about? Oh, yeah, the y-intercept. So you're looking at these two pictures, and hopefully you can see that I gave you two big blue dots on each graph. Well, one of them is obviously the vertex. But the other big blue dot is the y-intercept, and that's on both graphs. You see, the y-intercept is what I like to call free information, something you don't have to work for. It just gets handed to you when you're in standard form only. What is A? A is the number on the front. Yeah. A is the number that sits in front of x squared. B is the number that sits in front of x. C is the number that has no x's. The number that has no x. 
It's just a number at the end. So let's see, y-intercept. No matter what the equation is, no matter what the function is, no matter what the graph is, when you're on the y-axis, there is one thing that is always true. Any ideas? When you're on the y-axis, what is one thing that you can always say is true? Come on, second period new. Yeah, x is zero. There you go. When you're on the y-axis, x always equals zero. So both of these things are written as zero comma. And now we need to know what that y-intercept is. If you wanted to know what a y value is, all you have to do is plug in an x, right? So look up to the equation. Let's plug in zero. We ready for this? What is zero squared? And what's zero times a? <laughs> zero, oh, okay. Zero. What is b times zero? Zero, oh, okay. Hey, look what's left. The number c. So the y-intercept is always the constant that sits at the end of the quadratic in standard form only. That is only true for standard form. I told you yesterday. Vertex form, not hard. Standard form, not hard. Friday, we're doing intercept form, not hard. What makes these things difficult for students is when you don't know what format you're looking at. Because on the test, I'm gonna go, here's a quadratic, tell me some stuff. And it's up to you to recognize the format and therefore know the rules of that format. In standard form, which you're looking at right here, ax squared plus bx plus c, standard form, the y-intercept is always the number at the end. Mr. M, how do I recognize standard form? Standard form will never have any parentheses in it. That's how you recognize it. Standard form never has parentheses. It's remarkable the number of people that didn't write that down. Now, how do you recognize vertex form? I told you yesterday, but I'll reiterate in case you didn't write it down. Vertex form will always have a set of parentheses squared. You will see a parentheses squared in vertex form. Standard form has no parentheses. Now, the only other information that we need for this stuff is actually the most important information, the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Where is the, oh. Yeah, no, you're right, Michael. I mean, it matters, Michael, right? You need to know where is the axis of symmetry and where is the vertex. Now, in vertex form, that was easy. That was just handed to you. The vertex is what makes the inside equal zero, comma, the number to the far right. Okay, it's not handed to you for standard form. You gotta work for it. But we did talk about the axis of symmetry yesterday is the vertical line that always goes through the vertex. Well, vertical lines are x equals some number, and since they always go through the vertex, they will have the exact same x value as your vertex. We know that. And if we knew that x, we could plug it in to solve for y. Oh, I forgot to uncover this y-intercept thing. Sorry. But it's what I wrote on the board. The y-intercept is c, so 0 comma c is always on the parabola. The axis of symmetry, though, it is the student's job. I'm telling you right now, you must have this memorized. Hopefully you still have some memory cells left. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. This is the student's job. They must memorize x equals negative b over 2a is how you find the axis of symmetry for a standard form quadratic. How do we find x equals negative b? B to A. So B is going to be the number that sits in front of your X, so you'll plug it in, and A is the number that sits in front of X squared, and we'll have to plug them in. So mm -hmm. that B and that A actually stand for the, the A and the B that are in standard form all the way at the top of the notes. Uh -huh. You see, C is not part of this, because C is the Y-intercept. Now, if you knew the X value for the axis of symmetry, how could you find the Y value? If you knew the x value for the axis of symmetry, how could you find the y value for the vertex? You plug it into the equation. So that means that x equals negative b over 2a is going to be the x value of the vertex, correct? It will be the x value of the vertex. 
Oh, you know what? I want to write x equals negative b over 2a on my pictures. But yeah, Gavin says, if you know the x value for the vertex, which is the same x value as the axis of symmetry, you plug it into the equation and get the y value. Doesn't that normally mean like f of 2 means plug in 2, f of 1 means plug in 1? Right. So f of whatever number I want to plug in means plug it in, right? That means that won't frighten you? All that says is find the axis of symmetry and plug it in. That's what that says. That says find what x equals and plug it in. It looks frightening. It's not. You find what x equals and you plug it in. It, well, no, this, this means, this right here means, well, crud. This right here means, what is y when x equals negative b over 2a? That just means plug it in. That's all that means. The big set of parentheses is because this is a coordinate. This is an x comma y. The x is the same x as the axis of symmetry. The y is what you get when you plug the axis of symmetry in. You, you, you going to make it, Emma? You okay? You sure? It's hard to learn like that. You gotta be careful. A blood will pull to the back of your brain. No, oh, it's tough. Okay, I'm just worried. That's all. So here's an example. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down some things we know just by looking at the graph. And I always want you doing this because. You know, if it's a multiple choice test, you could probably throw away answers just because you know what the graph looks like before you do anything. It'd be so great if you guys never sat next to each other. Only, it would be, it's like, if only I had a seating chart that made it so you two don't sit next to each other. You're making a strong case for the opposite of what you just said. Okay, well, there's a lovely seat right here and right there. Yeah, are you? I wonder why his grade is higher than yours. So anyway, what are some things we know about this graph? Well, we know that it's got a negative sign on the front. What does that tell me? It's opposite, and it and it changes the y value. Well, yeah, it changes the y value, but I just mean what does it do to its shape? Because you're right, it is an outside thing, so it does change the y values. What does it do to them? Well, I don't know. Look, let's, let's look at our notes. Hey, look. Right there, a negative number on the front. No, points down. It points down because negative people frown. Aw, looks like this. So we already know that this thing points down because there's a negative number on the front. Now, don't worry about the plus or minus on the front. Now talk about the number on the front. That 0 0.5 is between 0 and 1. So what does that make the graph look like? That's going to make it look wider. Because I have a number on the front that is between 0 and 1, it's going to look wider than a standard parabola. Because this number, because this number is a vertical shrink, which gives it yeah, smash the Play-Doh ball up and down, gives it the illusion of being wider. That's why it looks wide. And the very last thing that you know, and you only know it because this is standard form and you don't ever have to work for it in standard form, is the y-intercept. It's free. You don't work for it. The y-intercept is the c-value, which is the constant at the end, 0, 3. This right here, that's your y-intercept. Well, since I know that coordinate and I know I'm going to have to graph something, I'm going to go ahead and put it over on the, on the picture, 0, 3. That's right here. 0, 3. Great. Look, all that was free. All that's free. Do you know how many wrong answers you can throw away with just that knowledge? A lot. You can eliminate at least half of the answers right now on a multiple choice test because you know that stuff. 
Now the rest of the stuff, we're going to have to work for it. The axis of symmetry. So we can't find the vertex in standard form without the axis of symmetry. Yes? So it's not the three Yeah. This three is this three. The zero is because you're on the y-axis. Anytime you're on the y-axis, x is zero. Every single time. That's what y-intercept means. Yeah. Y-intercept means I'm on the y like x-intercept means I'm on the x-axis. Y-intercept means I'm on the y-axis. And if you're on, if you're on the y-axis, x equals zero automatically. Not well. Okay, but the problem is, is in vertex. Right, but in the vertex form, the number to the far right is the y value of the vertex. That is not the vertex. That's the y-intercept. That's why I said it's important that you know which form you're looking at. Because the comma, the number to the far right, is only true for vertex form. So whenever we see an equation in that form, the number to the far right would be the y value. No. Whenever you see an equation in this form, the number to the far right is the y value, the y-intercept. Yes. Okay. All right. Axis of symmetry. You have to use the equation x equals negative b over 2a. And a few minutes ago, Michael W. asked me, so how would we use this? Well, here we go. Here's we using it. I strongly, strongly suggest parentheses anytime you are substituting a number for a letter. So here's the negative sign that is part of the equation. The b value is the number in front of the x. The a value is the number in front of the x squared, which includes the negative sign that's in front of it. So you're going to have a scientific calculator on the test. So don't be afraid of decimals. Don't be afraid of multiplications. Don't be afraid of divisions, yada, yada, yada. What you get here is negative 2 divided by negative 2, which is positive 1. Oh, x equals 1 is the axis of symmetry. Not 1, x equals 1. No graphing calculators allowed. Yes. Because the graphing calculator would tell you the answer without you working. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's two. It's not, I mean, it's not two. It's one. Might be. Sorry. Two times one half is definitely not two. It's a lot of undos. Undo, undo, undo. Ah! Well, that's too many undos. Oh, God, it's red. Well, whatever. There we go. X equals 2. Sorry, guys. There. That's better. X equals 2. Axis is symmetry. Fixed. Uh, there was a question for me in the back. Yes, Bryson. Did you say Mr. M? No, it was way over there. Oh, Gavin, what's up? You don't have graphing calculators. You have to learn this because the state of Florida sets up. Yep. So anyway, x equals 2. Hey, you know what else is free information now that we don't have to work for at all? If there is a dot that is two units to the left of the red dotted line, there must be a dot that is two units to the right side of that dotted line because that's right. Parabolas are symmetric. All we need now is to find our vertex, and we already know what x equals. x equals 2 for that vertex. We just need to know what y equals. We just have to plug the y value in. So every time you plug something in, I strongly suggest you use a set of parentheses so you don't mess up your signs. There was an x here. There was an x here. So everywhere there was an x, I'm dropping a 2. 2, 2, 2. And one of the very first things we did this year was practice PEMDAS. There was a reason why. F of 2 literally means what is y when x is 2. So right now we're just trying to track down a y value. Order of operation says exponents after parentheses. There's nothing to do in the parentheses, so the next one is exponents. You have to do the 2 squared before you deal with the negative 1 half that's on the front. 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 is 2, but it's negative. 2 times 2 is 4, and you get this. Well, negative 2 plus 4 plus 3 is 5. That means our vertex is at 2 comma 5. You put a dot on 2 comma 5 and you connect your dots. That's here. 
Don't go long. That means you're going to throw something. Don't do that. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, standard form is not the easiest one to graph, but it does really well for word problems. Try to control yourselves, guys. It's not that hard. So like right now, I'm not acting on the impulse to freak out, OK? Let's control ourselves. That is the end of the notes notes, but we have lots of time in class. And just like yesterday, I would love to practice some stuff. Would really like to practice some stuff. So if you could find something to write with and something to write on, I'd be thrilled. Question? The negative sign was right there. Oh, okay. The one at the very, very beginning. Yes, Dylan? I'm sorry? Well, A is always in front of X squared. B is always in front of X. So it goes A X squared plus B X plus C. So B is the number that's going to sit in front of X. A is the number that's going to sit in front of X squared every single time. So I've got some example questions for us. Let's start here. Let's start there. And I would like for you to well, write down the equation, write down some things you know, then find the axis of symmetry, find your vertex, connect your dots, and get me a graph. And I'll give you a couple moments to get as much of that done as possible. And during that time, I'll have the video paused so my folks at home, if they're trying to do it, that are watching the video, they can have some think time too. Let's see what we got. So I'd be looking for hopefully somebody in the room to tell me one thing they know about this just because they're looking at the equation. Emma, your hand went up first. Tell me one thing you know. Go, oh, one thing, one thing, one thing. One thing, one thing. She says points down. I agree. It points down. We know that because the front number is negative. So we got a frowning graph. Now, Maya, your hand went up. Can you tell me one thing you know? It is going to. You, you think it looks wider, and why do you think it looks wide? What is between 0 and 1? What number is in front of x squared? 1. Is that between 0 and 1? No. So here's the thing. What, so if you're trying to find something that looks wide, what you're looking for is a number like a fraction or a decimal. Okay. The fact that it's a 1 on the front actually tells us that it just looks as wide as we expect it to look which is kind of a weird thing to say. So it doesn't look any wider or any skinnier. But do you, can you tell me something we do know for free? The y-intercept happens when, when x is 0. Yes, always. And if you plug in x equals 0, what are you going to get for that y value? Negative 1. So that's free. We don't even work for that. Good, thanks. This is the y-intercept. So we know it points down, and we know it goes through the point 0, comma, negative 1. And unfortunately, uh, negative 1, 0, comma, negative 1, that's right here. Unfortunately, nah, we don't really know it's wide, comma, or I mean wide or skinny because, well, it's a 1 sitting on the front. So it just means it's just as wide as we expect it to be. Next thing we're going to have to track down is the axis of symmetry. Hopefully, had a bunch of people get to here x equals negative b over 2a. Well, here, b is the number 2, because that's what's in front of x, and a is the number negative 1, because that's what's in front of x squared. I know the one's not written, but it's always there. It gives me negative 2 over negative 2, which is, this time, positive 1. x equals positive 1 is our axis of symmetry. That is here. So free information, don't work hard. If there's a dot to the left of that, y line, uh, that uh, vertical line, there's a dot to the right of that vertical line, right there. Not working hard for it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Where did I get x equals to which, which 2? The, the 2 for b? Well, the equation for standard form of a quadratic is, come on, catch up with me, active panel ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is always going to be found in front of x squared. b will always be found in front of x. It just follows the alphabet. 
So for us, this time, A is negative 1, B is 2, and C is negative 1. I have a question. Yes, Michael, what can I do for you? Um, how come the, uh, the point on the right directly under yeah. the 2 yeah. is it directly on the like x-axis? Why is it not on the x-axis? Okay, so here's your thought process. Let me th think. You're thinking because it's a reflection of the thing on the y-axis, its reflection would be on the x-axis, right? I think so. Well, well, remember that this thing is its just splitting my graph in half, left and right. So if I had a parabola on a piece of paper, I could fold it in half and it would do this, right? So you're mm -hmm. supposed to imagine that that red dotted line is the fold on the piece of paper. So if there's a dot here, it has a dot right here directly across from it. Okay. So, yeah, so basically if there's one to the left of the dotted line, there's one to the right of the dotted line every single time. Hmm. It's free, and I don't want you working hard for it, okay? Now for our vertex, you're going to have to plug in x equals 1 to figure out what the y value is. Well, we know it's going to be 1 comma something, so we have to plug in x equals 1. f of equals, and every time there's an x, I'm going to put a set of parentheses, negative parentheses squared plus 2 parentheses minus 1. And everywhere that there was a set of parentheses, I'm plugging in x equals 1 to see what we get. f of 1 says what is y when x is 1, so I'm going to write y equals. 1 squared is 1, but there's a negative sign in front of it. 2 times 1 is 2. Guys, again, Neither one of you is doing this with me. Back there with a bag of cookies. It doesn't matter if you get it. You're distracting others that don't get it. Negative 1 plus 2 minus 1 is 0. So my y-intercept, excuse me, my x-intercept is my vertex. Strange. 1 comma 0. Yeah, that's right here. My vertex is sitting on the x-axis. Okay. Connect your dots. Got yourself a parabola. Just like that. So I think that we've probably gotten all the kinks and bugs worked out of it. So for the next one, let's we'll see if we can have a lot more success on the next example. Do we have any questions about this one before I go to one and you test your skills again? I was a little confused on how you got zero, but after doing the equation in my head, yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah, and don't worry, you know, on the test, you're going to have a calculator. So mm -hmm. I, I want you using the calculators to check your basic arithmetic because I don't want you to miss a question because you added or subtracted wrong. When you know how to graph a quadratic, you know, basic arithmetic, don't let it be the downfall. Use the technology to check yourself. All right. Okay, and let's see the next example. Come on, catch up with me, panel. There we go. It does fit on the grid but barely. See if you can make that happen before the bell rings. We've had plenty of time. Let's see. I'm just going to run through it just so we can have a completed example before the bell rings. What do I know? I know it points up because the number on front is positive. I know that it looks skinny because the number on front is bigger than 1. And I know its y-intercept is going to be at 0, 1. That's free. I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. 0, 1. I didn't have to work for that. Now, the axis of symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a. I use parentheses every time I substitute, and this will help me make sure I don't goof up a negative sign somewhere, because negative negative makes positive. My axis of symmetry is at x equals positive 2. So I can put a vertical dotted line down x equals positive 2. Because there is a blue dot two units to the left of my red dotted line, there is a blue dot two units to the right of my red dotted line. And all I have left to do is figure out what is the y value of my vertex. And I find that out by plugging in x equals 2 everywhere I saw an x. 2 here, 2 here, 2 here. Now we have to watch our order of operations. We do need to be careful with our PEMDAS stuff. PEMDAS says exponents come before multiplications. So that is 2 squared 
But then there's a 2 in front. So 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Well, 8 plus 1 is 9, and 9 minus 16 is negative 7. So your vertex was there, 2 comma negative 7. And then you can connect your dots and get this very skinny quadratic. The reason why it didn't turn positive is because the formula is negative b. And since b was already negative, the two negatives make a positive. Yeah, that's, that's why I always use parentheses, is so that I don't ever goof up a symbol.